Now let's destroy that lie. He said he did not die a painful death. That's what he said, right? All right. Let's let the tournament begin. Dun, 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 dun. The Quran says if Muhammad is a liar, he made up the Quran, that Allah would grab him by his right hand and cut off his life vein. Watch the humiliation for Muslims. And when our signs are recited to them, clear signs, those who look not to encounter us say, bring a Quran other than this, right? Or alter it. So I'm reading this. Say, it is not for me to alter it of my own accord. I follow nothing except what is revealed to me. Truly, I fear if I should rebel against my Lord, the chastisement of a dreadful day. If I mess with the Quran, Allah is going to mess with me. Now watch this. This is the humiliation. Chapter 69, verses 40 and 46. You can include also verse 47. It is a speech of a noble messenger. It is not the speech of a poet, little do you believe, nor the speech of a soothsayer, little do you remember, and sending down from the Lord of all being. Now watch the warning. Had he, Muhammad, <clears throat> invented against us sayings, we would have seized him by the right hand, and then we'd have sh surely have cut his life vein, his aorta, his life vein. Now watch. How Muhammad died according to the Muslim tradition. Anas reported that a Jewish woman, a Jewess, came to Allah's messenger with poisoned mutton. And he took of that what had been brought into him. When the effect of the poison were felt by him, he called for and asked her about that. Why did you poison me, the food? Now look what she said. Whereupon she said, I had determined to kill you. Now look what she says. Thereupon he said, Allah will never give you the power to do it. Yeah, but you still died of the poison. I guess either you're an ignoramus or Allah did let you die. He said that they, the companions of the Holy Prophet said, should we not kill her? Thereupon he said, no other tradition said he had her killed. But now watch what he says. This Muhammad, he said, I felt the effects of the poison on the uvula of Allah's messenger. Still not convinced? Okay. Said Bukhari. Volume 5, book 59, number 713, right? Narrated Aisha, the prophet in his ailment in which he died, used to say, oh, Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. And at this time, I feel as if my aorta is being cut off from that poison. Damn. But wait, what did the Quran say? We indeed created man, and we know what his soul whispers within him, and we are nearer to him than his jugular vein. When the two angels meet together, sitting one on the right and one on the left, not a word he utters, but by him is an observer ready, and death's agony comes in truth. That is what thou wast shunning. So Allah's rebuking unbelievers. You're going to face the agony of death. You can't escape it. But wait. Why the hell is Muhammad facing the agony of death? And the kind of death he faced is the one that here it said, had he invented against us any sayings, we would have seized them by the right hand and they would have surely have cut his life vein. Damn. What happened here? He died the way the Quran said he would die if he was a cursed liar. Do you understand what we just read? Now, let me anticipate an objection. Well, doesn't that prove the Quran is true? Well, at the expense of your prophet being in hell. When a Muslim tells you, you just prove the Quran is true. Because the Quran said, if Muhammad is a liar, Allah would cut off his aorta. Well, Allah cut off his aorta. See, the Quran is true. Yeah, but at the expense of Muhammad being damned to hell. Because if the Quran is true, that Muhammad's aorta would be cut off because he's a false prophet. And his aorta was cut off. That means he's a false prophet. He's in hell. So why are you following him? You can't have your cake and eat it too. Secondly, it's not that the Quran is true. Let me tell you how amazing Jesus is. The Lord Jesus is taking the very words of Muhammad and killing him dead in the exact manner that Muhammad said he would die if he's a false prophet to give irrefutable proof to Muslims he's a false prophet. Abandon him. That's the love of our Lord Jesus Christ in trying to save Muslims. Now, let me show you that life and death is in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch. Who controls life and death? Revelation 1, 17, 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet 
like a dead man. And he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not fear. I am the first and last and the living one and was dead. So this is Jesus speaking. But what does Jesus claim to possess? And behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. You know what Jesus is saying? He is Lord over life and death. He's Lord over the grave and Hades. He is the one who controls life and death. And you die when the Lord says you die. You're in his control. And therefore, Muhammad died because Jesus struck him dead and damned him to Hades. If a Muslim is stupid enough to come up and tell me, oh, so you're saying the Quran contains a true prophecy. Well, buddy, did you understand what you just said? If this is a prophet, is that true? That means Allah hates Muhammad, killed Muhammad, and damned him to hell. So the prophecy of the Quran shows that Muhammad is in hell. You sure you want to argue that way? But from the Christian perspective, it's not that the Quran is true. It's that the Lord Jesus used Muhammad's own words against him to give irrefutable proof Muhammad is a false prophet in hell. Because Jesus controls life and death. He controls Muhammad's life and damned him to hell. Now. You want to see God's sense of humor? You want to laugh? The apostle of Allah lived after this three years. When he was poisoned, he lived three years. Till in consequence of his pain, he passed away. Notice he didn't eat too much of the poison. He only ate enough of the poison that it stayed in his bloodstream. And then it became worse and worse until finally it killed him. You know why I say God has a sense of humor? Do you know why I say God has a sense of humor? Let me tell you why. You ready why? A Jewish woman kills Muhammad dead by giving him lamb to eat. Jewish woman, lamb. The Lord Jesus, the lamb of God, born of a Jewish woman, the Virgin Mary. And whoever opposes him, whoever rejects him, whoever rejects his true identity, brings judgment upon him. So if you eat the Lord's body, and blood in an unworthy dead, you eat judgment upon yourself. That's what 1 Corinthians 11, 27 and 34 says, right? 1 Corinthians 11, 27 and 34, we are warned. You better examine yourself that you don't eat the Lord's body and drink his blood in an unworthy manner, because then you're going to bring judgment on yourself. And that's why there are people at Paul's time, who, because they ate the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner, they got sick and died. Here. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 34. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was being betrayed took bread and had given thanks. He broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Now watch the warning. Paul's writing to people who are seeing this. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. You'll be sinning against his body and blood. And the Lord's body and blood cannot be tainted, defiled. It will bring judgment on you. But a man must test himself. And in so doing, he is to eat the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not judge the body rightly. Damn. Now look what he says. For this reason, many among you are weak and sick and a number sleep. You see what he's saying? That's why some of you got weak and sick and some of you died. Because you ate the Lord's body and drank his blood in unworthy manner. And you got judged because of it. You got ill because of it and died. Hmm. You see it? But if we judge ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord so that we will not be condemned long with the world. Now, you see what it's saying? When the Lord Jesus chastens and rebukes you for your sin, it's because he wants to save you from the wrath to come on the day of judgment to convict you to repent because he wants you to live, not die. You see the Lord's sense of humor? A Jewish woman gives Muhammad poisoned lamb, shoulder of a lamb, that killed him dead, caused him pain and cut off his aorta, proving he's a false prophet. Because Jesus is the lamb of God 
born of a Jewish woman, the Virgin of Virgins, Holy Mary. 